I don't know what I learned in school. I didn't really learn. I, I, I didn't really learn much as I came. I didn't. I had two CSCs. Um, they treated me okay. Some 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 didn't treat me that well because I was a difficult child. Not difficult. I didn't play. Not very violent. Just difficult uh, uh, through learning, and that was through my dyslexic that I didn't know about then. Mm -hmm. So basically, and what happens with somebody like that, dyslexic, um, um, autistic, if you if you kind of say to them like, oh, get, get in those days, one in the 60s or 70s, early 70s, get in the corner, you, you're done. It gives you a label, it gives you a label. It doesn't make you go any further. It just makes you go even more down because then you start inverting into yourself. You kind of really think. So when it comes to certain things, you go, no, I, I can't do that because you're shy or whatever. So you stop you from learning. So when you put your hand up that you don't really understand the question, instead of the teacher coming to you and saying like, okay, um, I could explain it to you, but no. So the teacher in, in the class would just go, okay, yes, all right, put your hand up, yes. Well, well, a classroom at school is more, oh, I'm going to say rigid, more controlled. It's a more controlled environment, you know? And I think at school, if you are an artist or anything, like, um, an individual, School, school. Even these days, school doesn't give you the up, the options to explore yourself. So it's all very uh, ch -ch -ch boxed in. But basically, when I left school, because my dyslexia thing, I, when I left school, I wasn't really good at English. I couldn't really read that well. I could, well, it just made not just me, but all kids. It makes you just feel that you're nothing really. But my practical side in school was was good. Metal work, woodwork, TD, technical drawing, and, and all that was amazing. And mathematics, I was a genius at school. I was all clever a really clever guy in maths. Because when I was 14, I started to do bricklaying, mm -hmm. building through my ex-teacher, um, Harry Boyd. And I started to went to college from when I was 17. I worked for a year, 16 to 17. September, um, I think it was 1989. I went to college for three years to take an advanced craft in brickwork in my city of Gills, mm -hmm. with which I passed and went on. And I think then, when I went to college, I think, I don't know, at school, because you think it's for the government as when you went to college, it's all well, what, I'm, what I'm learning here is for me. It's my livelihood, it's, my, it's going to be my future. So you kind of like wake up there and, and you, you study and you learn and you, you, you do your work. And, but when I passed and I got my first job, yeah, that kind of changed me. Because it was for me, you know what I mean? Uh, as in, um, as in uh, further education, university or college or wherever. You got the freedom to, to do what you want. You got the freedom to experiment with yourself, with your work, with your weird, with your whatever. Like so, that's the difference, I think. And there's no label in there either. But I've always wanted to be in photography, and I think I don't know. There's certain in all of us. There's a bit of art in, in all of us. There's a bit of creativeness. So I took this always. So when I got the chance to go to New York and to do a piece of art, I, there was a lot of omens there. So I started my photography then to to try to document the illness in New York. And then I exhibited it, I exhibited it in Birmingham with my work and somebody said to me, God, your work is very powerful. You should, you should, you should do more. So I just got myself together, went up there with my portfolio. But I just wanted to go there because even though you know about something, there is no, you can still learn more. Mm. Mm. So I just went there and that was the most brilliant experience. We had, we had a project in Samuel College. But every year they have the Magnum photographers. The Magnum photographers are one of the biggest photographers in the world. Man. The mm. agencies are massive. Mm. But these people come in and um, it was uh, Mark Powers. So he done his project. So we had to do something very similar to mm. his project. And so what my project was, was about was um, old people mm. showing affection in public. So that's what this, this woman, Hillary, she, she, she's a Quaker. Mm. She's a brilliant woman. She's just got time for, for life for, for people. It was her, man. It was really her. She made dyslexic people have a gift. For me, when I turned out, so I got to university, I did, I, in one way, I was glad to be dyslexic. Because just dyslexic people have a very creative mind. Yeah, they do. That's where my photographs come through and uh, yeah, how do. I composite, edit, or whatever I do, or see what I see, it's from my head. What? And she, before, when you were like, I know I was clever, but at school I was thinking I was sick. Mm. And because I was getting better in my photography, because mm. I'm a documentary photographer, mm. so I mm. used to take gangs and mm. riots and all sorts of things. But when I got to college, I learned another trait, mm. which is, which is mm. within photography, I learned studio work. Mm. So I take good portraits. Mm. Well, I just had an exhibit in, in, in the drum, it's called Reaction. And what it is, it's like a journey, it's like if, if photography, that's what my dissertation was all about. If we didn't have photography, if we didn't have these certain things put into place, society would be worse than that than well, what it is. So we need documentaries kind mm. of things to, to reference our things through life. And that's the power of um, putting up a lens and capturing that kind of life. You said you've seen my pictures. 
you know. Mm. Because what because with the education what I've made is another path for myself. Mm. You know what I mean? 